four months into our temperature blanket project, oh my gosh. So when determining which crochet stitch would be April's crochet stitch of the month, I really wanted to reflect on what we've already done, what we've already accomplished. So in January, we did the crunch stitch. That was a very short, dense stitch. Followed up by February's bead stitch, which was a tall, bulky stitch. Then March, we also had another tall stitch, but it was wide with that three double crochet shell stitch that we did. I mean, already three months into the project, and we are at uh, around 18 and a half inches long already, or approximately 47 centimeters. Oh my gosh, we are making some waves. <laughs> To balance everything out, I knew that April's crochet stitch needed to be a shorty. The vote is in, and the crochet club has voted that April's crochet stitch of the month will be the linen or woven crochet stitch. I think there's some other names for it as well, but just insert name here. <laughs> it's all the same. It's going to be a very small, short stitch, which will really help balancing everything out. So we got short, tall, then tall, short. If you are here and you're hearing about this project for the first time and thinking you you missed the boat, you didn't, I will put the link to the playlist for this entire temperature blanket in the description section below for you. Just click on that playlist, start from the very top where I go over the materials, how to set yourself up for the temperature blanket. Then I have each month's demonstration of which stitch we did per month. And all you have to do is reflect back on temperatures and work your way slowly and get caught up with us in the project. April's stitch card of the month is already up and ready for you to download. Just go to my website crochetwithtiffany.com under cro the crochet along tab. Just find April and it's ready for you to go. Leaving off, where did we leave off with February? So I like to use markers and circle the days that I'm going to account for it helps keep me on track so that way I don't have to worry if I skipped a day or if I accounted for this day or that day. I just have everything good to go. It also helps me with the dates. So I just look at the calendar and be like, oh, today's this date. Oh, I need to finish this mini rose. Okay, so last day in March that I have accounted for in my temperature blanket was Thursday. So I skip Friday and I will start by circling Saturday. Now working with a size four weight yarn, we are working a row every other day to make sure we are controlling the length of our blanket, the finished project. So I am going to circle every other day. Great, now the other thing to account for is if you're working with a size five weight yarn. If working the size four weight yarn, we're every other day. But the five weight yarn, we're only making two rows per week. So what I'll do is I'll come to the side of the week and I'll make a little mark here. And there's two different ways that you can attack this project. One, you can take every temperature of that week and average it out and write the average temperature here and then make both of your rows that color of whatever temperature that falls in the gauge or if there's been times when I'm working the blanket, I'm using the same color over and over and over again, and I want a little different color to pop in, I will look at the week, I will pick two colors in that week of uh, somewhere random that are in two different color ranges, and I'll use one row with one color and one row with another color in my temperature blanket just to add a different variation in there. All right, so that is the days that we're going to account for. Every week I will post updated pictures of my temperature blanket so that way I can give you a reference of here's where I'm at, here's where other people are at that send me their pictures and kind of give you somewhere to reference where you should be at in your project or what mine's looking at, how's yours looking. Recently, I noticed that my weeks were off. You will notice if you go back in my shorts, it'll say like week 10 and then jump to week 13. And you're like, what the heck, what happened? Where's week 11 and 12? It's because I realized right then that my week 10 was actually week 12. I had started late. <laughs> so now I'm on track and to make sure I stay on track. So the last week in March was week 15. So week 16, we'll start with the second. And then 17, 18, and 19. 
This will be very helpful when I post those shorts that say, okay, week 16, and then I'll go ahead and continue posting. This is week of April this to April that. So that way, if you don't remember what week we're on, at least you have those date ranges to reference. Oh, she's there. That's what her blanket looks like at that point. How is it compared to what my blanket looks like? So just great references right there. Speaking of the color gauges, I have to show you guys these. They are so beautiful. I recently got these gorgeous wooden color gauges for my temperature blanket from lorettecraftsuk.com. And they also have these super cute stitch markers that are weather related, it's all dedicated to the temperature blanket and they're customizable. So you can customize the temperature range. You can customize the year. I mean, honestly, now, whenever I make temperature blankets, I'm going to have to purchase these because they are so special. I also have buttons that say which month it is. So when I'm finished with the blanket, I will attach these buttons in each section to be like, this was January, this was February. They're amazing. And I really support anyone who does a handmade craft because I think it's extra special. So if you would like to get your hand Hands on any of these, definitely go to lorettecraftsuk.com. I'll put a link in the description section below for you to go to and get your hands on anything that might support a small business and also a hand crafter. And with that, I think we are ready to just go ahead and dive into the linen stitch, how we're going to attach it on top of the three double crochet shell stitch. Now, I'm not doing a demonstration showing you how to do the linen stitch from scratch, from ground zero off of the foundation row because I don't need a foundation row. I'm already attaching it to a project. So I'm technically starting this demonstration on row one of the linen stitch. And I'm going to just use a dark color to do my demonstration of this stitch. So that way it pops and you can see it better. It's not necessarily on track with what the temperature is outside right now. Okay, so I'm gonna begin by slip stitching into that first stitch space to attach my new color. There we go. Then I'm going to chain one and single crochet in that same stitch space. Then I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the following stitch. That is the repeat pattern for the linen stitch, woven stitch, whatever you wanna call it, and why it is so extremely popular. It's extremely beginner friendly. It's just chain one, skip one, single crochet. So chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Now I'm gonna pause right here and I want you to pause too because I know this is gonna happen to many of you. I already anticipate it. And so I'm going to be mentioning this a lot to you throughout the month of April. Watch your stitch tension. Because the linen stitch is a shorty and it is so dense, it can be very tight. I can see a lot of people getting further into the project being five rows in to April and noticing that their blanket is starting to cave in on the sides. That cave in is because the stitch tension is tighter than this three double crochet shell stitch that was below it. So everything is bunching in, everything is coming in. If you're somebody that automatically knows I have a naturally tight crochet tension, Feel free to immediately start April with a larger crochet hook than, you're, than you've been using for your project to help you out. Otherwise, just be very aware moving forward throughout the month of April to have a looser tension in your stitches. Okay, continue on and I'll meet you at the very end of this row, row one, to show you how we will close row one and how we will start row two. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And chain one, skip one, single crochet in that first stitch, or it would be the second chain of that turning chain from the row below. Perfect. That is how we are going to end row one of the linen stitch attaching it to our project. So we are sticking with the 191 stitches per row through the month of April. I made sure that I kept that the same on the stitch card for you. So those of you who are counting the number of stitches in each row, 
first of all, great job. Very, very good that you're doing that. Uh, second of all, yes, we're sticking with 191 stitches if working with the size four weight yarn. 131 stitches. Yep, 131 stitches if working with the size five weight yarn. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to cut my yarn like we would within the normal project. Most of the time we're switching colors anyway, yarning over and tying off. Great, flipping the work. Let's just say that my next color ends up needing to be pink and I picked this one because it seemed to help stand out apart from the green. And we're gonna start by slip stitching in that first stitch space to attach the new yarn. And then chain two. One, two. The chain two counts as the first chain is our turning chain, and the second chain is going to be the first stitch hopping over that first single crochet stitch. So that way we can single crochet into that chain one space. So single crochet in the chain one space. Then chain one, skip over that single crochet, and single crochet in the chain one space. That is the repeat pattern for row two, is just chain one. Find the next chain one space and single crochet into that, that chain one space. And repeat. Go ahead and continue on, and I'll meet you at the end of row two. Now remember to every now and then set your work down, Focus on your tension, again, loose tension. And if you're starting to notice that it's pulling a bit inward, it's begun the bunching process. So go back and maybe even make this second chain just a little bit taller. And everything super loose over the top chain one. Now not sloppy, let's try not to be sloppy, but as long as we have that loose tension, that's what we're going for. Just because, especially these first few rows right after that fan stitch, which is so spread out, we just want to make sure that we mirror and complement the stitch below, so that way the sides of our work stay straight. Chain one, Skip one, single crochet in that chain one space, and then, oh, I'm at the very end of row two, and I have one stitch left. I'm just going to make a single crochet stitch in that last stitch space. So every row two repeat, you will end the row with two single crochet stitches right next to each other. It's just how it works out with that odd stitch count and this pattern. Okay, this pattern, the linen stitch, has a two row repeat. So we are going to be repeating row one and row two interchangeably throughout the project. If it will help you out with your stitch card to write row one, row two, row one, row two, that way you know which row that you need to, be, to make for that day, you can do that. Or here's a quick trick for you to visually see what you're doing or what you will need to do moving forward. We need to make sure that we chain one, skip over a single crochet stitch, and single crochet in a chain one space. Let me show you. So next repeat would be a row one repeat, and how I will know the, the visual cue that I will see to know that I need to do this row as the repeat. Okay, so I slip stitch into that first stitch space. It's what you're always going to do no matter what row it is. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the second stitch. If that second stitch is an actual single crochet stitch, which it is for us, then I'm just going to chain one. I'm going to single crochet in that same first stitch space and then begin my chain one, skip over that single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space, repeat. Okay, easy peasy. So I just chained one and single crocheted in the first stitch space. If it is, if I look at my row and I see that the next stitch, the second stitch is a chain one space, I'm like, oh, okay, I need to single crochet into chain one spaces. So I will start by chaining two and then instantly single crochet in that chain one space 
stitch number two over. So always look, so slip stitch into the first stitch space and then immediately look at stitch number two, what is it? And that will give you your cue on what repeat you're doing. Because it is a two row repeat, we are still only making one row per day. We're not going to do two rows to do both repeats per day. It's just one row per day if working with the size four weight yarn. And then every week, if working with the size five weight yarn, you're gonna do row one, row two then pause for that week, then row one, row two, pause for that week. So hopefully that makes some sense as well. I hope you really enjoyed the linen stitch for the month of April. Just kind of really make it easy peasy, bring down the complexity a lot. Just be very aware of that tension. Watch your work, the sides of your work particularly to make sure that it's not caving in. If you are finding that you're having any questions regarding your temperature blanket, feel free to comment in the comment section below my weekly videos. I make shorts every single week where I am showing off my progress of the temperature blanket. So just comment in the comment section of that video and I will check that and I will try to respond and get an answer to you as soon as possible. Or definitely check out my Crochet Club membership on my website, crochetwithtiffany.com, where we have a chat dedicated to this temperature blanket alone where we can answer questions for each other, share pictures, uh, share pictures of problem areas we're having and how can I fix this and it helps me a lot to see what you're seeing and also there's weekly lives where you can pop in and show me, hey Tiffany, this is what it's looking like. Do you have any suggestions? And I can give you an immediate response, an immediate answer. Keep up your amazing work, my friends. You've got this. I hope you're having so much fun and I'm really excited to see what our blankets look like at the end of April. <laughs>